Hey there everyone, Hatesh here and welcome to another Flutter video. I hope you are enjoying this series and you have already subscribed to my channel. If not, I'm gonna be keep waiting here until you subscribe to this channel. Yep, I'm waiting. Yep, go ahead, subscribe to my channel. Okay, I'm just kidding. Let's get started and talk about this. And yes, of course, this video is sponsored by amazing orange juice that uh, I got it for myself. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about more stuff. We've already talked about the stateless widgets in the Flutter and honestly, they are very easy. You just usually have some buttons or probably some images or some text and you just display them on the screen. No functionality whatsoever. But most of the time, what you'll be interacting with are gonna be stateful widget. The widgets that carry some data, that mutate some data, probably some mutation of the strings, probably some mutation of integers, or probably some mutation of double. By the word mutation, I simply means by changing some of the data, probably making a value named my variable to from one to two, or probably from two to one, or any given case, you got the point. Now let's go ahead and further explore the stuff. Now we want to explore how we can convert or how we can create a stateful widget. In case you are wondering that I can just extend that to uh, something like this, stateful uh, widget, and it's gonna be all okay, and I can declare my variable. No, it doesn't work that simply. In fact, we have certain set of rules that you have to follow. And uh, there are certain guidelines, like you cannot just update any variable wherever you like. There are certain places only where you can update your variable. And I'll point out some of the places where you'll see some of the similarities uh, between Flutter and React Native as well. On their website, they uh, honestly say that uh, it is, this project is definitely inspired by React Native and they follow some of the good practices of React Native, like never ever mutate the state outside of set state. So uh, I'll point that out in a minute. Okay, so uh, we're gonna learn how we can do that. So go into an app dart and we're gonna be making a couple of changes. It's not like just one change, there are a set of changes that we'll be doing. So follow along with me and in case you want to have exercise files, the link is in the description section for the free course and you can grab all these exercise files from there. So go ahead and download them. So first and foremost, we are going to change this stateless widget into just state. And this is like a little bit tricky part. A lot of you are not gonna get it onto the first go, but surely it's it's not that much hard. So go ahead, select this stateless widget and we're gonna change that directly to just state. Yes, plain state. Now use these angular brackets, which might be a little bit weird for a lot of you, but it will all make sense. Just go ahead, use these angular bracket and we're gonna just call app here. Okay, now obviously, this is not an app just here. This is going to keep a track of our state. So inside this particular class, we will be declaring our variable in a minute and we'll be changing that variable. So we're gonna call this uh, simply as app, uh, probably app state keeper or something like that. It's totally on you what you, ro what you want to call it. I'm gonna call it state keeper. And now I'm gonna declare one more class. Now here's a debate point. Surely we can create a separate file and can put this class there and then can import this. Surely doable. We can create this small class into our main.dart file. Of course, doable. But right now, just for keeping things simple, we are declaring it here. In the later complex app, if you like this video and subscribe to the channel and we grow more into the series in the complex app, we definitely just write all of this code into a separate file. But right now, just follow along with me. So I'm gonna create a class which is gonna name app. The reason why I'm naming it as app because in my main.dart file, I'm calling this class here. That's why I'm calling this app here. Otherwise, feel free to call it anything. Now this is going to extend the stateful widget. So this is gonna be a stateful widget. There we go. And we're gonna just extend that. Now inside this also, we need to write some code. So we just write something like this. Notice here this create state. Uh, this is exactly, it's kind of a compulsion to have this. Just like we have this a uh, build here, we need to have this here. But this is very confusing and definitely it's very useful. But we're gonna use that later on. Right now we don't need it. So I'm gonna just command Z that. I'm gonna write this create state method manually. So I'm gonna say create state, pair of parentheses, and there we go. Now inside this create state, I have to pass something which is mutating my state, entire class of that. So I'm gonna just simply say return my state keeper. So app 
state keeper and I'm gonna just pass it like that and there we go. So this is all happy, this is all good. This is like, I know this is a lot of steps that we are doing, but this is all compulsion. So what we have learned so far that in order to create a stateful widget, we need to create a state. We have to define a method, create state, and this has to return a class which keeps the state. And to be very elaborate here, I have kept the name of this class as state keeper. Okay, that's all good. This means that now in this, which extends to this state app, I can declare my variables. That's good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a simple variable here. I'm gonna call this as integer type. I'm gonna call this as my value. Very bad name, I should not be using that. Something more intuitive would be a counter or something like life of player one or probably score of player one. That would make much more sense. I'm gonna start it with one, just a random value, okay. So what I really want to do now is as soon as I click on this button, uh, this data should be updated. So that's a pretty easy stuff. You might be saying that, hey, I would like to go into this on uh function here, the method which is calling it up. And I would like to simply do one line of code, which is going to be my value is gonna be equal to my value plus one. Surely there are other ways, plus plus, and, but let's just keep it simple. Is it good? Is it going to work? Let me show you a couple of interesting things about Flutter, which definitely are coming up from React Native. So we're gonna save that and we're gonna hit a Shift R Reload here. And we can see everything is fine, but the problem is we are not displaying this data somewhere here. So we need to do that. So instead of this Instagram, I can just replace that by a dollar sign and I can say my value. So hopefully, According to us right now, the code says that I want to display this value onto this Instagram. Let's try to hit Shift R, uh, hit Reload, and there is something not so good that we are doing, although our app is working. So I can see I can just click on it, but hey, why is it not updating? I have changed the value on pressed, and it's not even updating. So what's wrong going on with here? The thing is, there is a rule coming up from React Native that says, never mutate the state outside the function, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. And we have to follow exactly that rule. So what does that rule say? Just cut this entire line, cut that, and there is a pre-built method that you have to call. Okay, and this is not like a choice given, this is something you always have to do. So there is a method that says set state, probably I can write that correct. There we go, set state. Okay, and there we go. Now this set state is a method which also requires a method to be passed on. So you guessed it right, this is like a lambda function or probably a callback function. So pair of parentheses and after that curly braces and hit enter and now you can paste that line. You might be thinking, hey, that's extra work. Why is that? Because this is how the Flutter and probably React Native, these are all built up. This set state method keeps the track of all the things that are changing. So in case you want to change anything at all, this is the guy which keeps a track of it. As soon as something change, this calls some inbuilt method and then it updates the UI for us. The good thing is it doesn't update the entire UI, it just updates that component which is being updated into our application. So let me save that and show you again the things, what happened when we call the set state. Let's hit the Shift R to perform a hot reload which is pretty quick. And we're gonna go up here and now if I just click on that, now see, it updates the thing. But the good thing is it's not updating my entire application which is resource heavy. It's just updating this particular UI and which is good thing for us. But the point is uh, having updated this uh, into our app bar is not something that I planned up. I love the Instagram there so I'm gonna just go back and I'm gonna go for Instagram here, okay. So where we would like to display uh, this uh, thing here, this number here. And there are a lot of places I can just go onto the scaffold and notice we are having a floating action button, we are having an app bar. We do have one more element which we haven't studied yet here, probably in the later videos I'll go for that, and which is body. Yes, of course, we are missing it. We are working with this entire upper part and the floating action, but we do have to take care about this entire body as well. So in the body you can pass on uh, whatever the widget you like. One of the favorite ones so far we have dealt up with is text and we definitely can pass on our variable here. I'm gonna put a dollar and what did I name my variable? My value, of course. And I need to pass it as a string. So my, come on, dollar, my value, there we go. 
and hopefully now we will be able to see a small very teeny tiny text up here so let's just perform a hot reload there and hopefully we are gonna get that okay there we go I hope you are able to see this this is a very teeny tiny one here and we are gonna just update that surely it gets updated I hope you are able to see there is a six there very small very teeny tiny now this is all good we have learned how we can create an app which can change some of the state we have learned about this uh, create state uh, method as well we have also learned about uh, this uh, set state variable where that is there were set state so remember always there are two things which go side by side one is the create state one is the set state the create state is necessary to keep the track of all the states and the set state is necessary if you want to update any data at given point of time now here's a quick assignment for all of you now I can see that this text is very small and I don't like it you know me I like big things I like big and bold stuff so what we're gonna do here's a quick assignment I want you to look into the documentation of flutter and make sure this is visible at least uh, probably like a little bit big uh, taking like probably this much of the screen part or something and if possible change the color of this text element as well probably greenish or something this is your assignment I'm not gonna be doing it this is something that you have to do it and you have to post this into the discussion section or the comment section the exact code that you have to use for changing the text or the font size as well as the color as well so I hope you are enjoying the series and let me know if you are enjoying this should I make more videos of the flutter and post them on YouTube if it's yes hit that subscribe button and let me know in the comment section I'll surely catch you up in the next video